Hey everyone, it's Shama. We're back for yet another edition of Ask a Black Belt. If you've not tuned in for one of these uh, sessions before, this is how it works. You comment, ask questions, and our guest uh, will then answer it. Today we have Jenna Bishop. Jenna Bishop is a black belt. Uh, she's been training for some time. She's uh, originally came out of Missouri. She's now in San Diego at the Alliance. And uh, she recently just made her MMA debut. So we are super excited to have her on. Um, and I'm sure you guys are just as excited to get your questions answered. So I'm going to go ahead and um, and like I said, if you got any, post them up. We'll get her to answer them for you. Hey, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Yeah, of course. Awesome. So I gave you a little bit of an intro. So okay. I'll let you. I'll let you kind of uh, uh, elaborate further. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. So I have been a black belt in jujitsu since 2013. I think I'm coming up on my, uh, I think this month marks 14 years of doing jujitsu. And um, yeah, I started training in um, St. Louis, Missouri, and then moved up to San Diego uh, like four years, four or five years ago. It's been, I don't know, it's coming it's so long. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, here recently, I've kind of started to make my transition into MMA. And two weeks ago, had my first MMA fight. Congratulations. And, um, thank you. <laughs> I finally got it to happen. It took forever to get that fight. And so now I'm fighting next Friday again. Awesome. <laughs> so, this fight. so that's kind of, you know, about me, I guess. <laughs> Very cool. So when you started, did, was MMA something on the horizon when you first started jiu-jitsu? Or is it something that just sparked recently? Or... Um, so I wanted, I always wanted to, to train, or uh, f do a fight. Like, uh, when I first started, it was something that, um, you know, my husband was training jujitsu. He's the one that got me into everything, but he was fighting MMA too. So I was like, oh, maybe that's like, you know, like it'll be fun. And he's like, oh, why don't you stay with jujitsu? Like it's safer and then those kinds of things. And then I, um, he like, it's like, wait until you get like a purple belt and then maybe you can try. And then after that, it was like, wait until you get your black belt. And then <laughs> you know, those kind of things when and Jiu Jitsu was just then like my passion, my focus. So uh, here recently I was training with like a couple of uh, fighters, like MMA fighters. And that's kind of, they kind of like gave me that extra push I needed. So nice, yeah. <laughs> nice, awesome. Well, um, we have a first question. So what, okay. what, what, what age did you start training jujitsu? I think I was 21 when I started. Yeah. We what were, got I, you into it? My husband, he was training. Um, he had like started watching like the ultimate fighter, like the, the tough series. And like, I remember when we were dating, he was watching that. And then he's like, Oh, like, I would like to like, start training or something it kind of and my cousin was training um at a gym so I sent him there and then he had me training with him like I started doing like like some of the conditioning classes and then yeah like I he coaxed me into it and I was hooked nice awesome so uh, I know that sometimes with uh, jujitsu practitioners especially since you've done so well in in the uh, jujitsu circuit Mm -hmm. They have a hard time getting fights. Was it hard for you to find somebody to, to go against? Because you're like a black belt. You're like have all these, champ, you know, championships under your belt. Yeah. It was so hard. It was like, I mean, I was supposed to fight in February. They told me they were getting going to put me on a card in February. And it's taken this long. And I remember then I was like, I, I'm like, I don't think I need a manager right now because, you know, I'm just getting into it. And I already signed with LFA. So, you know, I don't know that I, a manager is going to do that much at this point. And then I'm like, okay, I'm not getting fights. So I signed with management. And they're like, we had like 18 girls say no, like Aww. last week. And I'm like, ah! So finally, <laughs> finally it happened. And yeah, it's been, it, it, it took a long time. I, I remember, like, I was even like messaging Mackenzie. I'm like, 
how how did you get a fight? Like I know it couldn't have been this hard for you. And she's like, I have girls that calling me out. <laughs> like I, was like oh, I don't know how to do that. Like get girls to call me out. <laughs> but it finally happened. So <laughs> nice. Like, what has been your biggest challenge transitioning over to MMA? Um. I mean, I think just getting comfortable on my feet, like, you know, the, obviously, like, I wasn't training, I hadn't, I did a little bit of striking when I first started jujitsu. But then after that, like, I hadn't done any in years. And so then I'm like, you know, just getting used to that and keeping my eyes open when I'm throwing punches and getting punched. Like, Look how it's like, coming at you. <laughs> but I'm feeling more and more comfortable all the time now. And you know, it was, I've already, I've always loved wrestling and I've, I was doing wrestling to help with my jujitsu anyway. So that's, I think, helpful, really helpful in, you know, doing the, or making that transition. But, you know, I've just really commit, committed myself to the striking because that's obviously the, the thing that I had the least amount of experience in. Yeah. No, I, I think that I think a lot of people who, who really emphasize and focus on jujitsu, that's the next hurdle to kind of to come to overcome. Have you ever been like doubted, you know, for your gender, for being a woman? Have you ever kind of experienced anything like that, you know, whether in the jujitsu world or, or now in the MMA world? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think be, I think I mean, I think every woman has an, has an experience like that. And we're not alone in that's like, people don't, I, I don't know, it, it happens all the time. And I remember it's something that like, maybe this is what like pushed me to like really do jujitsu. But it was I hadn't started training yet. My husband was um, fighting his first MMA fight. And we were dating at the time. And I was sitting with my family watching him. And there was a guy that was like making comments about the fight. And he was like being belligerent. And I said something like to him and he told me to shut up and go play, uh, stick to my volleyball. And I was like, oh, oh. honey, <laughs> you're messing with the wrong girl. <laughs> and I remember I didn't have to do a say much else because my dad was right there and he's a pretty intimidating guy. And he kind of like just stood up and then the dude just like cowered down. But I was like, maybe that like doubt of like thinking I'm just like some girly girl like that can't you know, handle myself really forced me into like, no, I'm gonna show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're like, don't, under don't underestimate me. <laughs> don't. don't do it. <laughs> I live for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the old, give me a reason. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so what someone asked, you know, they recently got their black belt and uh, they, I guess they're feeling nervous about it. Did you feel that kind of like that, I guess that like pressure of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get my black belt. Now I have all these expectations. Like, and if you did, how did you, how did you work through that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's really scary because the, the learning curve is so steep at black belt because you think the difference between, like, levels and black belts is far greater than, like, the difference between white to brown in a lot of regards, you know? Like, there's just so much experience. And then I remember a lot of the girls I was fighting against, they were, you know, they had been training or had a black belt longer than I had even been training. So that was, like, really, like, nerve-wracking to me. And I remember after my first tournament, I was like, no, I belong here. Like, I got this, like, my, you know, and I know, you know, my coaches, like, my professor wouldn't have promoted me if I wasn't ready. So that's something that you have to tell yourself, like, you're ready. And then you can't compare yourself to anyone else. Like, I'm on a different track. I'm on a different path than a lot of other people. Like, if you're just a hobbyist or if you're a competitor like your age, like all these factors like go into that. And mm -hmm. so you can't just compare yourself to and like you have to look at it for your own journey. And I knew like, I think that that competition like really gave me the the boost that I needed to be like, No, I belong here like this. I, I can handle myself amongst these, like women, these legends that I've been looking up to for so many years, you know. So that was really, I think, it's always a hard thing. I think every belt is that way, you know, where you're like, oh, did I, do I, am I ready to make that jump? But sometimes you need it to like force you to push you to give you the confidence, you know? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Have you, have you ever had any kind of, uh, and, and, uh, and it's private and everybody's health stuff is private, but have mm -hmm. you ever had any kind of health things that have impacted your journey or that have kind of held you back? And, and if you have, what, how, how have you kind of worked through that? Cause that's hard, right? Mm -hmm. When you have these limitations physically. Yeah. I mean, there's always the injuries and things like that, which I'm not really good at. Um, resting <laughs> when I have injuries and taking time off to let them heal. So I was just telling one of the girls like all these things the other day about her injury. She was stressing out and like I was telling her things that I thought she should do. Uh -huh. But then one of my one of the girls looked at me and she's like, mm, the cop that's that's funny. <laughs> I was like, I know it's hard. I'm telling you because I'm telling myself right now too. So those kinds of things are I think um, if there's always injuries. I mean, I think one of the things that actually like forced me off the mat is I got like a really bad um, vertigo, from oh. a virus. And that was something that like, I you can't I was like, Oh, maybe, you know, I can't lay back if I move my head too much, then if I'm so I just can't play guard. And I went in and I was like, I'm gonna play on top. And I'm like, you're not you're moving too much for that. And so, <laughs> you know, it was only like a two week thing that kept me away. But uh, I think that's probably but other than that, I haven't really had a lot of I've, I've been very blessed, like, from that standpoint. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And and I know you've had like some phenomenal uh, coaches and mentors, you know, including your husband. What is some of the best advice that you've gotten that's like really stuck with you that you've been like, okay, this is something I've been able to kind of carry through my journey? Man, I'm trying to think because I know I've had a lot of like really good people tell me things. I'm just really bad. I'm, you know, I've been... My brain's not working the best at this point, so remembering all this stuff is kind of hard. <laughs> Training a lot. I literally, like, rushed out of a tr session to come come with this. But, um, man, I don't know. Like something maybe about competing or, or, like, sticking with it or? I think, you know, something that it's something I feel like somebody had told me, and, and I feel like I – tell other people and I'm just losing my train of thought again um I don't know I really don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll make it easier what we can come back to that <laughs> what advice do you have for women men kids that are tuning in today in like sticking with jujitsu, keeping them motivated. Cause it's hard, right? You've been doing it, it 14 it years, right? It's like a, it's like this, right? You're really yeah. into it. And then you're just like, I, I need a break or I need to focus on other things. So what, what would you say to them if they're kind of, especially coming out of the pandemic, right? A lot yeah. of people took the first break they ever took and then they mm -hmm. had to come back. So what would you say to them? I think, you know, I tell, I tell this to people all the time, but like, when you are hitting plateaus or if you feel like, man, I'm, I suck. Like we all have those days where like you show up and you're like, I maybe take this belt for me or take these like promotion, whatever these stripes off my belt. Cause like, I don't know jujitsu anymore. I don't think like we all have those, those moments in those days. Like it's, and those are the days where I'm like, when you're starting to feel that and you feel like you've hit that plateau or that, that um, things just aren't clicking that's the time that you need to just keep pushing through because you're on the, like, just on the other side of that is like you like making a jump to like a new level. And it is so hard because it's the most discouraging thing that happens. But if you can stay with it long enough, you're going to be able to like, you're just on, it's just a little bit longer and you have like more to, to, to give and you're going to get better. I promise. And, you know, I like, I always tell people to like, it like competing is not necessary to for the journey. That's something as mm -hmm. a competitor, I think people always want to know, like from me, like, oh, what about this in com competition? Do I have to compete to get promoted and all these kinds of things? And you don't like that's, that's for me. Competition is, is for me. It's not for anyone else. And if you don't want to do it, I definitely don't think you should throw yourself out there. It's not re a requirement to get better. It's not a requirement. But for me, it is something that I feel like when I have that goal of that competition, I'm training with purpose. I'm training differently. So then I feel like that gives me 
um, it kind of like helps elevate my jujitsu because I'm so focused in on that. So if you don't have a competition, if you if that's not something you're doing, I always tell people like make sure you you're training with purpose. And I think this is something that my coach used to tell me all the time that was really really stuck with me. It's like don't just show up and think like. I'm just gonna roll and see what happens. And you know, we're gonna drill this move and then I'm gonna do the same thing. Like you'll stay the same if, you don't, if you're not, if you don't have a focus, like be mindful of like, okay, this month or this week, I'm gonna be trying to get better at this or working on this. And if you set those little goals for yourself, you'll keep progressing at a much faster rate than you would if you're just showing up and like just kind of doing whatever. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm the same way. Like, like if I want you put a goal in front of me, I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, I know what I'm shooting for. Yeah. I like know what discipline it takes to get there. But yeah, a, a lot of people have a hard time when they're just kind of like, oh, la di da, you know, I'm just yeah. going through. Yeah, even and I think that's where the belt system comes in as a, a goal as a milestone, right? Like yeah. to, to go to shoot towards. Oh, yeah. You know, but um, going back to competition now, you competed a lot. You know, I mean, yeah, I've seen you out there for years and years on mm -hmm. end now. And uh, did do you get nervous, or did you get nervous, or do you still get nervous? Like, and how do you? Of if you do, how do you get? How do you deal with that? That like, are there some things that you do to kind of help calm you? You know, I think everybody's different in how they like to prepare for that and to get over those nerves. For me, it it's I get a very anxious nervousness where I'm more like, I hate this waiting. Like, can we just go now? Because I just want to <laughs> not just get it over with, but like, I'm ready. So I don't, I'm done waiting. Let's just go. Let's do it. And so that for me, I always feel the nerves up until like I slap hands with my opponent and I'm like, okay, we're just going now. It's just fighting. And I always, I feel like I get more nervous doing like big tournaments than I do like doing like a, a fight to win or, you know, just like, or even my my MMA fight, I wasn't as nervous for as I was doing like, as I was like a oh, world championship or something like that. And the more you compete, like just, if just doing it, like competing is a skill. So the more you do it, the better it is. You, you find what works for you. For me, I don't like to like, just put headphones on and be by myself and try and zone in like, you know be really laser focused before i would rather like keep everything light and loose i listen to music while i run and warm up or like have it on to like be just kind of like distracting and fun vibes and mm -hmm. i want to be talking about pretty much everything but fighting until like i'm basically like getting ready to walk out and go because that keeps my me in a better like if i treat it like i keep telling myself it's just like training in the gym just even though it's not but it's like it's that kind of thing then I can kind of handle my nerves a little bit better yeah that's awesome you see I mean you see so people dealing with it in so different ways you see Christina Barlone who starts like busting out and dance before her yeah. matches and I remember Mackenzie was in there chatting everybody up <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's funny how everybody has so many different ways to kind of oh yeah help them kind of get through that and, and I think you know, a lot of people, they think, oh, when you're doing it all the time, you still don't have that. But it, it's definitely still there, you know, for, oh, yeah. for a lot of athletes that I've talked to. Oh, yeah. What is, like, since you've been in jujitsu for so long, you know, we've seen, uh, we've seen tremendous change in the last 14 years. I mean, okay. it's gone from being like this kind of small, weird thing that a select group of kind of oddballs did and everybody yeah. else is like what is this and then UFC just blows it up right so it becomes mm -hmm. very mainstream what are some of the things that you've seen that you know have changed in the time that you're really kind of like oh wow yes I'm glad that that happened I mean there's a lot I mean having more women it's like probably the biggest change like it's insane to me to think back to how many tournaments I've done where it's like, are there going to be any girls that show up? You know, there's, there's, they have like 
weight classes that are like maybe like suggested like we'll probably do this but we're kind of gonna see and and then we'll just <laughs> see who shows up and then it's gonna be you know the big girls and the small girls and we're gonna split it into two groups and that's it or and it's so, the women's <laughs> the yeah women's. or yeah you have one women's thing and so it's always like an open class or something and so that was always hard for me to prepare i'm like should i be you know should i try and get a little bit smaller or should i just stay where i'm at and then do it do what I need to do. And I think that, and then like, there's just been a lot, like the organization is so much better. I'm not, you know, it's rare that you go to tournaments where you show up and it's like, uh, you don't know what time you're fighting. You don't know what, like what the bracket is. You don't know anything. You, most things are run to where like, you know, like I would up. It's like, you're going to fight, you know, to the minute what time you're supposed to be fighting. And so that is like, it just helps ease my mind as a competitor. And then, you know, I'm happy to see here recently a lot of changes with like culture in jujitsu and it's kind of a heavy topic, but like, it's really refreshing to see people standing up for this kind of like abusive, um, like culture that's been, especially towards like women and, and, and children, you know, because I don't know, like it's. I've seen it so many times where you see these coaches like, and it's, it's not, it's not only jujitsu it's in a lot of sports, but I, I just feel like it's so, um, it's so nice to see people that are in like high, like have like a kind of like a good a voice or like have a lot of power in the sport speaking out against these types of behaviors because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sick of it. Like I have always been somebody that like, I've tried to do my best to, protect the women that are around me. Like I kind of like have this like mama bear vibe where you're like, you're not going to mess with my girls. Like if you do, like I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. And so, but seeing, and especially having so many women have come to me using jujitsu because they've been abused or they've exactly. been in situations where they want to take back that power. And I'm like, that should, that's what jujitsu is about. It's supposed to, to give you that confidence, that power, not be doing the opposite. So I'm really happy to see some changes being made and hopefully like we won't have to like be dealing with as many. There's always, I feel like you can't weed out all the bad apples, but I think we can kind of, I like the exposing all the ones that are there. Cause they oh, need yeah. it For doesn't sure. matter who you are. Like For sure. in sport, like, you can be a so-called legend. I don't care if you're abusive and you're a crappy person, like get out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was talking to somebody this about this the other day and it was, I don't think that it's happening, happening necessarily more often, but I think because people are more comfortable, mm -hmm. we're hearing about it a lot more. You yes. Know? And I don't yeah. think, because I've, I've heard like whispers here and there, but oh, I don't mm -hmm. want to ruffle feathers or oh, I don't think anybody will believe for years now, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And, and so I think the fact that it's become, that they're seeing that there's more support out there for them, yeah. mm -hmm. that I think the only way to really kind of keep putting the spotlight on the people that are in the community that are continually perpetuating these issues is mm -hmm. to keep the noise going about it, you know, yeah. cause yeah. it gets loud and then it gets quiet again yes. and then it gets loud when something else happens and then it gets quiet again. But, yes. uh, so yeah, it, that's it, happened. Like there are so many of the stories that girls talked about. It's like, I remember when that came out, it was years ago and this guy is still like able to be in academies, run schools. And it's like, it gets talked about, but then brushed under the rug. And I'm like, no, we're not brushing under the rug. And I think we have the right people like leading the way now that are like, not going to let this just slide anymore. Yeah. And I think the more women that speak out and like, there'll be more and more stories that people will start to feel more comfortable. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. We need to continue to shine that spotlight on it for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause there's, th th there is a dark underbelly to this world, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Like, and, yeah. uh, and you've been in it long enough. You're well aware of it, but uh, yes. if you're new, <laughs> you're kind of like this wide eyed, everybody's great in jujitsu. Everybody's oh, wonderful. Yeah. And you're like, no, hold, hold dial not. it back a little bit. <laughs> like, I try and warn, I try and warn people like quietly, like on the DL, everybody that's close to me, I'm like, ah, stay away from that person. Like they're not the best because like, you know, some of the stories aren't mine to tell. So yeah. I'm, I, unless somebody else wants to tell their 
their story. I'm not gonna do that for them, but I can also just be like, eh, maybe like don't train with that person or be around them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's nice, too, to see the men jumping in, and, yeah. and it, it brings a different tone to it. Uh, you know, fortunately and unfortunately makes a difference, right, to mm -hmm. having them involved in, in it. But it, I think definitely seeing prominent men in the community stepping up oh, and, yeah. and speaking out about it is a huge step in the right direction. Oh, yeah. It's not just I us women talking about it amongst ourselves anymore. Yeah. I think that happens a lot with like the women, like uh, not even just with this, but like the women's jujitsu not getting the coverage that it deserves yes. in a lot of ways. And you have a lot of women speaking up about it. And I never wanted to be that person because I'm like, you just like to the people and they already kind of like look at you and like, ah, they're just like some nagging woman, like doing like what women do. And so <laughs> you, you talk out about it more. And then it's just like, they just are like, well, we don't want to, they kind of like hush you even more, you know? And so I never wanted to do that. But I, what's been nice is that I've always had my husband to do it for me. You know, okay. he kind of takes that role where he's like, it's like, I don't need him to speak out for me. But he's like, no, like, I know you're not going to say anything. But so I'm going to say it for you. Because you know, he's pretty respected inside the community. And I think that that has always been something that's been so helpful for me is that I just, he's always got my back. And it's funny because people are like, oh, it's weird how you guys are such fans of each other. And like, he's like always so supportive. I'm like, what else would he be? Like, we're like <laughs> married. I'm like, the person I love the most in this world. And it's like, of course, like we have each other's backs and we're going to do that because that's what a relationship should be. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, that, that's funny to me, those comments. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, that your, your, your partner should be your biggest supporter, right? I mean, that's the, your partnership. <laughs> that's the whole yeah. point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for sure. But, um, but I, have, I have a question, too. So, like, okay. you know, I, f I found that, like, you know, especially in jujitsu starting out, and I don't know how it was in Missouri, it was, you were very, you were an anomaly being a woman, you know, 14 years ago on the mat. Oh, yeah. And I, f I, I know through my experience that there was a sense of kind of having to not, not hide your femininity, but you wanted to kind of fit in with the boys, right? Yeah. And you wanted yeah. to prove that you were there, like, hey, I'm here. I want to learn. I want to train. I'm not here for anything else. Mm -hmm. Like, how have you, how have you, have you experienced that yourself? And how, how have you been able to, like, kind of, because, I mean, you're a gorgeous woman. How have you been able to, like, maintain your, like, feminine, feminine side on top of having that, like, tough, kind of like strong exterior I think for me like it's I don't know it, it I do understand that it's like that that thing of like I don't I don't want to be treated like a girl like I don't I want to be treated the same but we're not the same at the same you know so it's kind of this weird thing but having starting out I had a, a really great group of guys around that when they saw me there they saw like how dedicated I was how how hard I worked in, in what I put into it. And I wasn't just going to be like, Oh, like if you like hurt, you're not going to just hurt me. I wasn't fragile. Like I want to go hard. And like, I think they appreciated that mm -hmm. and having them like, I don't know. I, I was able to like, I guess, prove myself to the guys around me on the mats to where, um, I think, it was nice. I always joke around because I got treated like, like they'll call me like dude and like talk to me. Like, like sometimes they're talking. I was like, do you realize you have a woman like around here? Like the conversation is like definitely like weird. I don't want to it. But I also, res I also kind of enjoyed that I got that kind of respect was like one of the guys like kind of thing. But it's just as me as a, like a person, I just can't, I, I enjoy it. Like if I don't, makeup is like my favorite thing outside of jujitsu, like makeup and fashion. Like I love those kinds of things. So I think it's really hard for me to like, i never want to lose my femininity, but I always like to be a very strong, like an independent. So it was easy to balance for me. I don't know, but I do see that happen. And I also, I mean, I can say there's a lot of women that show up 
to jujitsu and they're just like trying to be cute and want to be seen by the guys so it's there and as the leader of a women's program i was always kind of like mm, if you're not here for the right reasons like i don't really like i'm not going to give you extra like attention or those kinds of things you can go do your thing because i know you're not going to be staying here like no. very long it's you're going to be in and out you'll find a boyfriend or something and then be gone or whatever so i never really like gave that a lot of attention but i think again like having i started with my husband so it was like he was vouching for me already and so that's what i love about having like a women's program now where we i mean i have like 30 girls on the mat like every tuesday wow. thursday it's amazing and i have a, an amazing group of women at the academy that um now but it's such a it's a, a great thing i think you just give women this like beautiful uh are this like safe and like fun environment to get started to where like all the girls that i i that train with me train with all the guys too it's not like they just come to women's class but it's mm -hmm. an easier entry into the world of jujitsu versus like having to come in and then like you might have some weird sweaty dude or like <laughs> i don't know like who knows who, who you could you could have one bad training experience like a bad partner one time and then like that could you might never come back and so yeah. i love having that option of where you're gonna have like girls that are so inviting and like women that want you to be there that are encouraging you it's not like this weird catty thing it's like no like if there's more of us like we're gonna make each other better it's gonna be like amazing like just like lifting each other up being there for you to be like and then you know then i teach them how to like bully the guys that's my thing <laughs> That is a very good skill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want you guys. I I really take it as a compliment when the guys are like, "Man, Jenny, your girls are so mean." Oh, like, yes. <laughs> <That was> awesome! <laughs> oh, hey. That's the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got to pass the torch. <laughs> Definitely, gotta teach them how to, you know. This is how you have this world. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get anywhere being nice here. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well, I'll close out with this. What, you know, and this is a big question, but then looking back, you know, when we're, we're, we're old in our well, golden years, you know, what do you want to look back in, in the, um, when you look back on your jujitsu and your MMA career, what do you want to look back and be like, I want to remember, be remembered for this. I'm so happy I did this. Like what, what mark do you want to leave uh, behind in this world? I mean, honestly, like, I just want to be like, for me, my goal is just to be like, be known as like, not just as a, as a great competitor. Cause I, I mean, that's definitely something that I was always striving for. And, but that's such a selfish like endeavor. That's something that has always been hard for me to, to just only focus on on myself like training i think that's what i've i want to be able to like have laid like like given a good like i guess like blueprint of like this is how you can run a, a great women's program and like help like i want to be known that i was like somebody that like was caring and like as always trying to help people not in just their jujitsu but like you know there for you like on and off the mat and that kind of a thing because i think being like a good a good person is more important like and a caring and compassionate person is more important to me than just being known as a great competitor like i think being authentic is probably the thing that i pride myself in the most of like you're not gonna i can't hide who i am like you're gonna if you have a conversation with me you're gonna know who I am. It's not a show. It's not an act. Like I just being authentic is kind of the thing that I, I guess would probably love to be known for the most because I, that's one of the qualities I respect in people the most. And, um, I also think it's more, it comes across as like more genuine. And I think people can like respond, like can have a better, I guess, relationship with you when you are your authentic self all the time versus like this, I'm putting on this hat and this hat and doing this thing now. It's like, I don't know, you get lost. I mean, I think you would lose yourself in that. And so I don't want mm -hmm. people to feel like you have to be this or that to 
become a competitor to come like whatever to get this in jujitsu it's like no you can just be you and like and people will respect that and it's not always the most beneficial thing to me but it's also it's the thing that i think has actually been more beneficial long term yeah absolutely but to, to, to i always say like to live speak and and be your truth you know that's i think that's yes. super super important is to to be true to yourself and true to others and it reflects out there but. yes awesome well great well thank you so much for being on thank you for yeah, s- sharing some of your insight some of your knowledge with us that was really awesome to to be able to do this with you um glad we get to catch up as well and Good luck this weekend. Oh my God. Thank you. We'll be cheering you on. Thanks I think so much. I think you're going places. I like, I definitely, you're off to a good start. <laughs> I am. I got one down. Let's go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Keep that momentum going. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for participating in this uh, Q- live Q&A. We're super stoked to be able to provide these opportunities for you guys. And I personally enjoy talking to all you got to all our wonderful black belts like Jenna here. And uh, uh, we appreciate all your support. And thank you so much. You all take care. Thanks, Jenna. Bye. Thank you. Bye.